And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. The wrath of Yahuwah, a fate that none of us want. So, what is the image of the beast, or his mark? Rather, even more simply asked, who or what is the beast? The answers to these questions have been veiled from the masses and are more important than you know. In its time, they are revealed. Welcome to part one. This series will be fast paced and effective to show you by the scriptures and world history who or what the beast of Revelation is, what the mark of the beast is, and related truths, which will help you properly understand the rest of the book of Revelation so you and your family won't be caught in the snare of the confusion of the end times. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, and his seat and great authority. This is the beast. To understand what it is, we need to go to the original source of this prophecy, to the book of Daniel. In chapter 2, Daniel is given the wisdom to know and interpret King Nebuchadnezzar's dream, which no other man in the kingdom of Babylon could. This was a dream about the four world powers, or kingdoms, that would rule until the return of our Savior, Yahusha HaMashiach who will dash them all to pieces. Thou, O king, saw and beheld a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before you, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron, and part of clay. You saw until a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and broke them to pieces. This image in the dream was of four distinct kingdoms and coincides with another vision that Daniel was given in chapter 7. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion, and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given unto it. This is Babylon, the world power, the lion, the head of gold, whose national symbol was a golden lion, and as gold is unmatched with splendor, so Babylon was, which ruled until 539 BC. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised itself up on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it, 
And they said this unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. The chest and arms of silver, the Medo-Persian Empire, with its massive 2.5 million troops, the symbol of a bear was spot on, and it was raised on one side as one portion of the kingdom was stronger than the other. Three ribs were in its mouth because it conquered three kingdoms to obtain its rule, Lydia, Babylonia, and Egypt, before it was in control to rule the earth, which was from 539 to 311 BC. After this I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given unto it. The belly and waist of brass, also known as bronze, the Grecian Empire, or Greek Empire, whose armor was of bronze, led by Alexander the Great, was like a leopard, as his conquests of the world were done in such a quick manner and efficiently with only 35,000 troops. The leopard had four heads, who were Alexander's four generals who split the kingdom in four after his death. They ruled from 311 to 168 BC. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. The legs and feet of iron. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaks in pieces and subdues all things, and as iron that breaks all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. History tells us that the Roman Empire took control in 168 BC, and as per the prophecy, will do so until the end of this world. It's also worthy to note that the Roman soldier was equipped with iron armor and a short iron sword called a gladius. No coincidence. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. And the ten horns of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. In the midst of the Roman rule, we see a shift in power, just as the prophecy states. The iron legs, then the feet mixed with iron and clay. During this time, the shift of power went from pagan Rome to the Holy Roman Empire or papacy, if you will. Also at this time, there were ten distinct kingdoms within, known as the Ten Horns. The Alemanni, which eventually became Germany. The Franks, which eventually became France. The Burgundians, which eventually became Switzerland. The Suevi, which eventually became Portugal. The Vandals. The Visigoths, which eventually became Spain. The Anglo-Saxons, which eventually became the English the Ostrogoths, the Lombards, which eventually became Italy, and the Heruli. When the power of pagan Rome declined, which was from 351 to 476 AD, the power of papal Rome increased as the church accumulated more power and influence. When the Emperor Constantine blended paganism and Christianity into one around 321 AD, Rome became the religious capital of the world. We see in Daniel 7-8 that an eleventh horn, or kingdom, arose and destroyed three of the others to gain power. The papacy mercilessly destroyed the Heruli in 493 AD, the Vandals in 534 AD, and finally the Ostrogoths in 538 AD and the papacy officially rose to power in 538 AD and reigned until 1798 when Napoleon conquered and ended its power. 1260 years, 
which is interesting as in the end times the same beast is given 1260 days to rule and reign and here is the mind which hath wisdom the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth we learn in Revelation 17.3 that the woman, Mystery Babylon, rode the beast. This beast, not the woman, was situated on seven mountains or hills. Rome is built on seven hills. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was, and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. History shows that the Roman Empire was ran by seven different distinct heads, or governments. At the time of this prophecy, five had passed, one existed at the time, and one was yet to come. Rome was ruled by kings, republic, which is two elected officials, a decemviri, which is ten men, a triumvirate, a council of three, dictators, Julius Caesar is an example, emperors, which were king of kings. For example, Herod was subservient to the emperor, and popes. And the beast that was, and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goes into perdition. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. As mentioned a moment ago, the papacy had ruled from 538 to 1798 AD when Napoleon took control by sword and ended its reign. This wound was healed in 1929 with a Lateran Treaty, where the Vatican was given its status as its own nation and the Pope being its king. The prophecy of the Eighth is interesting in and of itself. Since the 1929 treaty, the current Pope is the Eighth and is of the seven heads of government, and as the prophecy states, will go into perdition. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. The Pope and God are the same, so he has all the power in heaven and earth. Pope Pius V The foundation of all our confidence is found in the Blessed Virgin Mary. God has committed to her the treasury of all good things, in order that everyone may know that through her are obtained every hope, every grace, and all salvation. For this is his will, that we obtain everything through Mary. Pope Pius IX but the supreme teacher in the church is the Roman pontiff. Union of minds, therefore, requires together with a perfect accord in one faith, complete submission and obedience of will to the church and to the Roman pontiff as God himself. Pope Leo XIII The Savior himself is the door of the sheepfold. I am the door of the sheepfold. Into this fold of Jesus Christ no man may enter unless he is led by the Sovereign Pontiff, and only if they be united to him can men be saved. For the Roman Pontiff is the Vicar of Christ, and his personal representative on earth. 
Pope John the 23rd. Mr. President, final question. Yes, sir. You said famously, when you looked into Vladimir Putin's eyes, you saw his soul. Yeah. When you look into Benedict XVI's eyes, what do you see? God. Good way to end the interview. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. And think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time, and times, and the dividing of time. The Julian calendar, proposed by Julius Caesar in 46 BC, was a reform of the Roman calendar. It took effect on January 1, 45 BC, by edict. It was the predominant calendar in the Roman world, most of Europe, and in European settlements in the Americas and elsewhere. The Gregorian calendar is the calendar used in most of the world. It is named after Pope Gregory XIII, who introduced it in October 1582. They also changed so many of Yahuwah's laws. But just on the surface level, we can easily look at the well-known Ten Commandments and see their work. The second commandment of idol worship was completely removed. No wonder, as this false religion is covered in idolatry. In an effort to make it seem as though they have the same Ten Commandments from Scripture, they break up the Tenth Commandment into Commandment 9 and 10. They are also guilty of changing or altering the Sabbath to establish their mark of authority. Cardinal Gibbons, in Faith of Our Fathers, freely admits, you may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforces the religious observance of Saturday, a day which we, the Catholic Church, never sanctify. Protestants do not realize that by observing Sunday, they accept the authority of the spokesperson of the Church, the Pope. Of course, the Catholic Church claims that the change Saturday Sabbath to Sunday was her act, and the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical authority in religious things. Sunday is our mark of authority. The Church is above the Bible, and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his head ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. So as we saw in Daniel's vision, the beasts were a lion, a bear, a leopard, and an unnamed fourth beast, which is revealed in 4th Ezra as an eagle, are combined and subdued by this end times beast. A kingdom that seeks to unite and assemble the earth under a one world religion, the new world order, masked by the papacy itself, which our savior Yahusha HaMashiach will destroy. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. Yahuwah has said unto me, You are my son. This day have I begotten you. 
ask of me, and I shall give you the nations for your inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron. You will dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve Yahuwah with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry and you perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Have you put your trust in Yahusha, the Son of the Most High, Yahuwah, for the remissions of sins? Do you keep his commandments? Do you have his mark of authority or the mark of the beast? For all this knowledge is great, but without faith in the author of salvation, it is worthless knowledge. And did you know that he who overcomes and keeps his works until the end will also dash these nations to pieces. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. I pray that this short teaching has opened your eyes to the beast of Revelation, which is different than the whore of Babylon, which we will cover the truth of her identity in part three. But next, in part two, we will see exactly what the mark of the beast is and how you can avoid it and have the mark of the living Elohim instead. The Most High, Yahuwah.